I am your cousin Bobby, and tonight we scream 1973's Don't Look in the Basement. This film is about a mental health facility that is experimental at best and earth-shatteringly unethical at worst. A young nurse, played by former Playboy model Rosie Holitick, comes to work at this facility, but she soon discovers that there are many dark secrets. Secrets that you all will totally be able to guess as the film goes on. <laughs> this movie would probably only be known as a strange but simple horror offering. Uh, if it weren't for the fact that it appears on a list of 72 films the British government keeps known as the Video Nazis. If you're a longtime horror fan, then you already know about the list and use it as a guide to make sure you've seen all the good and gory stuff. If you're unfamiliar with it, well, buckle up for the next couple minutes and I'll explain. In the 80s, England experienced a moral panic over horror films on video. <laughs> because of this, the Director of Public Prosecutions ended up using the Obscene Publications Act of 1959, a law used primarily for pornography in order to raid video stores. Uh, the DPP released a list in two sections of titles that had either been successfully prosecuted or could be prosecuted as a guide for video store owners. The list included familiar titles like Evil Dead, The Last House on the Left, Driller Killer, and Cannibal Holocaust. Sounds like a sleepover I had in high school. In fact, Driller Killer and Cannibal Holocaust are generally recognized as the movies that kicked all this off. Vipco released Driller Killer to video in 1982 and took out full page ads of the film's cover art, which featured the murderer taking a drill to a man's head. This led to a large amount of complaints by the public. A few months later, distributor Go Video sent an anonymous letter to Mary Whitehouse of the National Viewers and Listeners Association, uh, an advocacy group that campaigned against violence and sex in entertainment. This letter complained about cannibal holocaust in an attempt to gin up some free publicity for the film. This backfired. Uh, in the next couple of years, White House would get help from politicians and right-wing media like the Daily Mail in campaigning against these movies. In 1984, Parliament passed the Video Recordings Act, which officially enabled the BBFC to rate these films. If the film did not pass or did not submit for classification, anyone who distributed it could be prosecuted. Now, one of the most humorously upsetting things to me is that in order to assist in passing legislation, Mary Whitehouse and conservative MP Graham Bright, who wrote the VRA, cut together compilations of the scenes that offended the most. Who, to me, that doesn't sound like someone who wants to ban these movies. That sounds like a fan of horror. What horror hound hasn't done something like that? And another maddening thing is that this film isn't all that gruesome. There's a blood-soaked finale, yes, but otherwise it's pretty tame. It's really more of a weird, free-flowing horror bath. So strap in, prepare yourselves for something the British government doesn't want you watching, and don't look in the basement. I look here. I just heard him, Sam. It's gotta be them, Sam. It's almost 19.30 hours. They would have left an hour ago. I think that's him. Hear him, Sam, real low. Watch, above those trees. Are they really coming, Sergeant? You wait. 
They do this every night. Sam, what's that? Right through there. I don't like it when you say they're coming, Sergeant. It scares me. It's all right, Sam. It's all right now. Shall I tell him, Jane? Yes, and you both come away from the window. It's been longer than ten minutes now. Sergeant Jack, Jenny says it's all right now. Come on, it's all right. Jenny, if they do come, will I see them? No one's ever seen them, Sam. Now let's not be late for supper again, shall we? baby again. All right, Harriet, I won't touch your baby. You better not. You know what will happen to you. I'll, I'll kill you. I swear to God, I'll kill you. Ready to eat, Sam? Oh, every night. Dr. Stevens makes me eat the soup. I bet you don't know how many kinds of soup I've eaten, Jamie. Come on, guess. I don't know, Sam. Well, Janie, when can we put my boat in the water? Sam, there's something I've got to tell you. We've been friends for a long time now. But I'm going to have to leave now. I'm going to have to say goodbye. Goodbye? That means you're going to leave me, Janie? We can't play with the boat? I'm sorry. Oh, I miss you, Sam. But I just can't take this any longer. Oh, I know you don't understand. When you're ready, come eat your supper. I'll be in to join you later on. Right now, I have to go and talk to Dr. Stevens. Put my boat in the water. I bet Janie didn't say goodbye to you, neither. I bet the axe, Judge. Listen to me, Judge. Use the axe, Judge. Go ahead, Judge. Use the axe. Use it. Again, Judge. Once more again. Strike out. Harder, Judge. Now again. That's it, Judge. Hit it again. And again. Strike it. Strike it. Dr. Stevens, I must speak to you. Yes? What is it, Jane? I... He's doing very well tonight. Can you sense how each stroke reaches down, freeing some part of his conflict? Perhaps just a cell or two of the unconscious brain, yet he's reaching it. Reach for it, Judge! Dr. Stevens! Yes? Doctor, I've come to a decision about... about all this. I just can't take it any longer. Harriet threatened me again tonight. I'm leaving. I... 
Well, you said you had someone else coming out tonight, someone to help. I can't accept that decision, Janie. You're a professional. I won't allow you to do it. <laughs> Put it down, Judge. Put it down, Judge. Put it down. <laughs> judge! 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 Put it down, Judge. Put it down, Judge. Put it down. That's right. Oh, God. Oh, how did this happen? I don't know. Oh, get out of here. Judge. Judge. We're not going to do anything foolish. Get the ax, Sam. Very quietly, we're going to walk into the house. Come on, Judge. Don't look at Dr. Stevens. I'm going to help you. Come on, quietly. Quietly, calmly. That's right. Into the house. I'm coming with you. That's right, Judge. Sam, put the axe down on the ground. Sam. Sam, listen to me. From now on, I'm going to take care of the family. I'm going to take care of Cameron and Janie and all the others. Do you understand? But Jane is leaving. Oh? All right, listen to me. I'll be back in a few minutes to tell you what to do with Dr. Stevens. Do you understand me? I'm coming, Judge. That's right, quietly, calmly. Don't cry, baby. Don't cry. I'll get you a bottle.
Martini. The lady. Go to your room now, Sam. Have you been standing there long? Why, no. In fact, I just this minute came in. I didn't see it. I'm Dr. Like... Masters. Geraldine Masters, am I expecting you? Well, perhaps Dr. Stevens hasn't mentioned my coming. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm Charlotte Beale. RN Psychiatric Therapy. Beale? Yes, I'm to get settled in tonight. I'm starting with Dr. Stevens first thing in the morning. Well, perhaps you'd better go into my office this way. Have a seat. Now, would you mind telling me again just who you are and exactly what you're doing here? Dr. Masters, I'm sorry you haven't been informed about my coming. You see, Dr. Stevens hired me, oh, about a week ago, I think it was. Yes, on the 20th. I had heard about Dr. Stevens' unusual psychiatric methods and called for an interview. He liked my training and background and said he was terribly short on qualified help and asked if I would start this next week, which is today. No, 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 just wait a minute, Miss Beale. First of all, I was not informed about your coming here. And secondly, I feel sure that Dr. Stevens would have brought this up with me if he'd reached a decision about you. <laughs> Dr. Masters, certainly there can't be a mistake. Oh, perhaps it's just an oversight. And you That's just the point, Miss Beale. Dr. Stevens would not have made an oversight. Not about something as important as increasing our staff, not when there are just three of us. Uh, normally, three of us on the staff. You know, perhaps I really should go in to see the doctor. He's expecting Ms. me. Miss Beale. I have something very unpleasant to tell you. We've, uh, we've had a tragedy here. We've lost Dr. Stevens. He was viciously attacked by one of the patients and he died shortly afterwards. So you, you can see this is just not the time to discuss any of this. Well, surely you can understand how his death has greatly changed things. And naturally, I've... I've taken over in his place. But since I wasn't informed about your coming here, I, I feel no need to keep any minor commitment that he may have made. Well, certainly not now. You see, I'm, uh, I'm changing some administrative objectives, and uh, what Dr. Stevens had in mind may not be exactly what I'm planning. Well, not now. I just can't believe Dr. Stevens is dead. We have to accept that, Miss Beale. I just don't believe you could be of any help right now. Dr. Masters, I gave up a perfectly good job to come here. They wanted me to stay, but I left. What place are you talking about? Green Park General Hospital. I'm a supervisor of the South Beale, I'm not North. questioning your qualifications. Did Dr. Stevens talk with your supervisor about your leaving? Oh, I'm sure he did. Besides, I showed uh, them this letter of acceptance from Dr. Stevens. Then they uh, knew about your coming here, then? Why, yes. Do you uh, have any place to go from here, Miss Beale? Well, frankly, no. Unless, of course, Green Park would consider taking me back. I suppose I could tell them what's happened here. About Dr. Stevens. And about your taking over. Perhaps they would make some sort of consideration. I Miss Beale. Frankly, I, I, I have a very difficult decision. There have been some abnormal reactions with a few of the patients. Dr. Stevens trusted them. He treated them as though he were their father. So realistically, this has been a death in the family. Now my job is to recreate that trust. I doubt seriously the Green Park would take you back and it would be very awkward trying to explain all of this, so... Uh... Well, since you're here and Dr. Stevens did make the commitment, I guess you might as well start in the morning. Thank you, Dr. Master. Now you must understand that I'm not offering you anything of a permanent nature. It takes a very special attitude to work here. Dr. Stevens told me that. Dr. Stevens believed that insanity was not a breaking away from reality, but rather a very complex series 
of obsessions. Psychiatrists have always tried to reverse that, you know, bring the patient back to normalcy, but Dr. Stevens believed the opposite. He believed that, that these obsessions could be pushed, forced, to grow so large, so ominous, that the patient would have to use his own strength to destroy them. Really? That's a very interesting theory. We live and work very simply here, Miss Beale. Our patients are all people who are unloved, unwanted, forgotten. So we're a family, their family, and everyone helps with the chores. Well, now, I'll, I'll show you to your room. I'm afraid there's no connecting back. be comfortable. I have a lot of things to do now, so if you'll come into my office in the morning, we can go over your routine. Thank you, Dr. Masters. Good night. Oh, Dr. Masters, where are the patients' rooms? Oh, they're uh, right next to yours and upstairs. As I said before, we're a family, and it's for that reason there are no locks on any of the doors. Dr. Stevens didn't believe in the doctor-patient relationship. Good night. Good night. There's no reason. Oh, there's plenty of reason. My name is Charlotte. What's yours? Up the airy mountain, down the rushing glen. You never can go hunting for fear of little men. <laughs> Good morning, Harriet. These are just a few of our little family. You'll have an opportunity to meet them all later. Danny, behave. Thank you. Oh, it's true. Dr. Stevens tells me what he wants. Sam. He's very sad this morning. Why is he sad, Sam? Because everything's changed now. Like that Miss Charlotte and that some others. My baby's very sleepy. Very sleepy. Charlotte's name is Miss Beale. That's what you're supposed to call her. Dr. Stevens calls her Miss Charlotte. He's very worried this morning. Oh, hush it up, Sam. Leave us alone. say goodbye to you. She wasn't your friend. Sam, it's time. Are you ready? Oh, shoot, Sergeant. Do I have to? Oh, all right. Prisoner's inside. Guard that door carefully. Oh, all right, Sergeant. 
What do you want me to stand, Reggie? That's right. And you'll not leave it. Oh, sir. Are you coming back? The director of this movie is S.F. Brownrigg. He was a regional filmmaker in Texas and primarily had a career shooting army training films until this point. After the film's success, he would go on to direct Poor White Trash Part 2, Don't Open the Door, noticing a common theme, Keep My Grave Open and Thinking Big. In December 2013, Brownrigg's son Anthony directed a sequel to this film called don't look in the basement too. Very creative. We'll be back to B-Movie Mayhem right here on TV20. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man. Women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60. Two over 50. One over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. A lot of drug abuse messages are full of statistics. How many people die? How many lives are ruined? How much drug use is costing the economy? But this message isn't about numbers. It's about crack. And the message is simple. Crack can kill you. I won't bore you with the statistics, except to say that it's not worth becoming one for a 10-minute high. The production company behind this film, Hallmark Releasing Corp, not that Hallmark. They also worked on Last House on the Left. And you can see that film's iconic advertising campaign recycled on Don't Look in the Basement's poster. So like those campaigns warn you, to avoid fainting, just keep repeating to yourself. It's only a midnight movie show hosted by Cousin Bobby. It's only a midnight movie show hosted by Cousin Bobby. Back to the movie. Sam. Jada didn't say goodbye to you. She wasn't your friend. Sam, it's time. Are you ready? Oh, shoot, Sergeant. Do I have to? Oh, all right. Prisoner's inside. Guard that door carefully. Oh, all right, Sergeant. What do you want me to stand, Reggie? That's right. And you'll not leave it. Oh, sir. Are you coming back?
That's Danny. Yes? The guard is posted, sir. Jennifer? Yes. The prisoner is secure, sir. Thank you, Sergeant. That was Sam's friend, Jaffe. Yes, we call him Sergeant. Difficult case, war. He was or is a real Sergeant. His uh, platoon was lost in combat because of something he did. His prisoner, as he calls her, is Jennifer Downey. I want you to watch her very carefully, spend some time with her. Several times she's attempted to escape. Escape? In the sergeant's jargon, to uh, break confinement. Sam, I've told you not to interrupt me when I'm busy. But, Dean, what you want me to do with Sam, I'll, I'll talk to you about it later. Go on now. Go on. And that's Sam. Sam. Sam is a lovable child. He's been a patient of Dr. Stevens for several years. And Dr. Stevens operated on him three, you know, four years ago. Dr. Stevens allowed me to assist him in that operation. Drilling through the frontal lobe left Sam harmless, but with the mentality of an eight-year-old. That was the last lobotomy Dr. Stevens ever did. And it was because of that operation that Dr. Stevens turned from surgery to his obsession development theory. Tell me about Allison King. Allison? Let's see. Allison has had a very unfortunate past. She was very close to her father, and he died. She was 13. Then her mother remarried a man that Allison absolutely cherished, and he left. And that was the beginning of the pattern. Allison tried to love other men, cruel to her, and they left her, and she almost gave up. It's a classic pattern, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Then Allison met a man. She thought he was perfect. He loved her, and they lived together, but he used her. He sold her to other men. Well, her love for him smoothed that over. But then someone came along that was younger and prettier, and he threw her out. And that was the breaking point. What is her attitude now? She craves love, desperately, from anyone, everyone. And these others, Harriet and Mr. Cameron? Judge Cameron. My name is Oliver W. Cameron, Juris Consult, Judicator of the Court of Appeals, Doctor of Jurisprudence. What are you doing in my room? Well, I really dig all that mumbo-jumbo. You know, it's just quality. What is that odor? Strawberry. Do you like strawberries? S ripe strawberries are the color of blood. Taste me. Please. Taste me. I can be anything you want. To be carnally minded is death. Come on. I do taste like strawberries. Taste me. Shroud your nakedness. You're obscene. I'm, I'm warm and I'm loving. I have, I'm loving. I'm passion. Men love me. There's not a man anywhere who doesn't dearly love my body and soul. Slut! <laughs> you freak! <laughs> you don't want to be touched because you're so damn pure! You phony freak, your trembling look at you. You're hot for it, but you can't reach out. You can't reach out, you can't love, you can't make it, but I can't! Rejection can be a very painful experience. Well, I'll tell you about the others later, but right now I'd like for you to start with Mrs. Callingham. 
Oh, yes, Mrs. Callingham is the one who occasionally hallucinates. Oh, yes, she has a number of interesting worlds. Why don't you take her for a walk? She likes the flowers. She sometimes believes they're her children. It's pleasant here, don't you think, Mrs. Callingham? Do you get out often? It's you who need to get out. <laughs> yes, I remember. You were going to tell me why. Oh, up the airy mountain, down the rushing glen, we cannot go hunting because of little men. Oh, Bobby, Ellen. Operator, 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 operator. Oh, Sam, I didn't hear you come in. Dr. Stevens, he don't call on the phone anymore. Sam, I know how much Dr. Stevens liked you. Dr. Stevens wants us happy. He said I should tell you. Sam, I understand. Dr. Stevens is still very real for you. Oh, Miss Charlotte, I, I forget what the doctor told me to tell you. I, I knew it a minute ago. Sam, it's all right. I understand. Come in. Sorry to bother you when you're busy. Well, that's all right. Have a chair. It's about my phone. Well, patients seem to be accepting you. That's important. I suppose you'd notice that it's the little things that count most with them, especially Danny and, of course, Sam. You're very fond of Sam, aren't you? Yes, very. Dr. Stevens was very close to him, too. Sam's lost his intelligence, but he has very deep feelings. Perhaps deeper than ours. Oh, Dr. Masters, I... Oh, don't be alarmed. This is Jennifer. Occasionally she becomes very withdrawn, and naturally I like her to be with me when that happens. Is she beyond help? Beyond help? To say that means that we've given up and we never give up. No one's beyond us. We're always getting closer. Yes, of course. Please don't misunderstand. No, 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 I understand. Well, it's time to be getting them to bed. I promised Sam that I'd read to him. Would you mind seeing to the others? No, of course not. Dr. Masters, I hope you'll forgive my statement about Jennifer. I simply meant that I... It's just that you're not quite used to all our little family yet, Miss Beale. One day you'll be as close to them as brothers and sisters. Good night. Good night. Dr. Masters, before I forget, I wanted to tell you that my phone is not working. I was wondering if you're having the same trouble. No. Well, that occasionally happens. I'll try to take care of it. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good night, Harriet. She's asleep. And it's time you should be asleep, too. Good night. That's enough for tonight, Mrs. Callingham. Oh, you like that walk in the garden? Yes, I did. Well, don't be surprised if we never go again. Don't mind my observing. You handle Mrs. Callingham very well. Better than some of the others.
to understand that ours is a family of persons who know very few limits, even the limits of physical pain. When, when Mrs. Callingham did this to herself, she was probably beyond the threshold of physical feeling. My greatest concern about her is the blood that she's lost. She's very weak. I don't hold up very well, do I? I'm sorry. It, it's just the thought of our all being asleep. She was probably hallucinating. Self-infliction of pain, self-disfigurement, sometimes that indicates that the patient has transcended the body. Oh, what would Dr. Stevens have done in a case such as this? Exactly as I'm doing, calling as little attention to it as possible. Now, she's received treatment. Now she has to accept what she's done. For the time being, I, I wouldn't discuss this with any of the others. Dr. Masters. Aren't you ever afraid? I'm always afraid. Show me where the equipment is. What trouble are you talking about, sir? Well, I don't know yet. It's uh, it's something with your voltage drop. Oh, well, never mind. I'll, I'll find it myself. Say, how come you people didn't call? I mean, about the telephone. It can't be working. My name is Oliver W. Cameron, Juris Consult, Judicator of the Court of Appeals, Doctor of Jurisprudence. Well, that's got to be some big problem. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Cat got her tongue? I warn you. Heed the lady's advice. What did she say? <laughs> she said, your being here represents grave danger. <laughs> oh, lady, I'm sorry. I mean, I didn't know. She ain't got no tongue. Mm. Objection all ruled. That is immaterial, irrelevant, and... out of order. Oh, they let you people just wander around out here, huh? Hey, buddy, how about give me back my screwdriver, huh? you to my chambers. No, 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 that, that, that's quite all right. Uh, look, here's what we'll do. You, you people just, just wait right here, okay? And, and I'll go and, and find the equipment, all right? And if I'm not back in three minutes, why, you people can go and hide, okay? That's an awful virus you got there, lady. Exactly. How did you enter this building? Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
first. Which way are you? I mean, this way or that way? I don't know what you're talking about, and I want you to answer my question. I'm, I'm sorry, Doctor. It's just that, well, you've got so many twilight people around here, you know, and, well... Exactly. What are you intending to do here? It's your phone. I mean, we've been getting some strange readings on your voltage lately, and, well, I just came out to check it as quick as I could and get the hell out of here. Why didn't you inform me of your coming here? How could I inform you? You ain't got no telephone. You've uh, got bouncers on every door and a receptionist that ain't got no tongue. What's the inform? That's enough of your impertinence. You had absolutely no right to enter this building without my permission. So what am I going to do? I'm supposed to fix the telephone. You want me to fix the phone? You don't want me to fix the phone. It don't matter to me. I'm just the phone man. Now, I drove for an hour to get out here. You tell me. All right, this way. Leave the area. I'll be back in a few minutes to escort you out of the building. And under no circumstances are you to have anything more to do with any of the patients. Now, is that understood? Whatever you say, Doc. I'm just trying to help. You know what I mean? Shouldn't take too long, huh? No, no. One of the lines was cut. It'll just take a minute. You, uh, you do understand me, don't you? You know, I... I used to live in this place where the phone man was always coming around. Oh, yeah? That bad, huh? Uh, that good. <laughs> I, I, I thought you meant that, that you had a lot of phone trouble. Hell, I didn't even have a phone. <laughs> Who let you in anyway, honey? Uh, I don't know her name. The, the doctor, I guess. She let you in? Yes, yeah, sort of. She is the boss, isn't she? You know, you know you're kind of handsome. What's your name? Now, look, honey, I'm, I'm just the telephone man. Don't be afraid. Look, sweetheart, uh, you're a good-looking gal and all that, but this ain't my bag. Not, not in the closet, it ain't. Now, cut it out. I ain't even supposed to be talking to you or nothing. Don't be afraid. Don't back away from me. You love me. You do love me. Say it. All right, Arithi, I, I, I love you. Now, cut it out. Oh, you love me. You do love me. Oh, I'm a princess. Oh, I'm a princess to men. They can't turn away from me. They, they grasp me and kiss my flesh. Don't push me away! You said you loved me. You said that you loved me! No, cut it out! Love is pure. Love is grace. Love is strength. You love me. Your love is pure. You'll always love me. <gasps> now look what you've done. I've got a secret. I've got a secret. And I ain't gonna tell nobody but Miss Charlotte. You're doing fine now, Mrs. Callingham, but you need to rest. You've been up and around too much. She's fooling. I'm sorry. 
sorry, Daddy. I'm sorry you shouldn't have scared me. You won't tell on me, will you, Daddy? You won't tell on me, will you, Daddy? You won't tell on me, will you, Daddy? The name of that old lady is Mrs. Callingham? <clears throat> I'm asking because I thought it was Callahan. And why is there only one doctor and one nurse in this home? I think the doctor getting axed at the beginning was proof enough that that's a horrid idea. And how does this home get its funding? Who there would have the time to write grants or anything like that? <laughs> Send your theories to CousinBobby216 at gmail.com. If you're okay with your email being read on air, please mark it as such in the subject line. We'll be right back to Don't Look in the Basement, here on B-Movie Mayhem on TV20. Until all our daughters are safe. Until all our children have families. Until all our families have homes. Until all our parents are cared for. We'll be here. One fifty over ninety. One eighty over one eleven. One sixty over one ten. I had a stroke. This is what high blood pressure looks like. You might not feel its symptoms, but the results from a stroke are far from invisible or silent. If you've come off your treatment plan, get back on it, or talk with your doctor to create an exercise, diet, and medication plan that works for you. Go to loweryourhbp.org. If I would have followed a treatment plan, I would not be in this situation. My name is Cousin W. Bobby, adjudicator of weird and wild movies, doctor of the horrific and heavy. I implore you, please stay with us as we continue to watch Don't Look in the Basement. Fine now, Mrs. Callingham, but you need to rest. You've been up and around too much. Give me that box, Danny! You hurt me! She's fooling! I'm sorry, Danny. I'm sorry you shouldn't have scared me. You won't tell on me, will you, Danny? You won't tell on me, will you, Danny? You won't tell on me, will you, Danny? Will
real condition. Dr. Masters, perhaps I shouldn't come here at all. I don't think there's any point in our talking about your leaving, Miss Beale. You forget you were very anxious to take this job. I made special provisions for you to be here. I realize that, but I don't know what to do. I'm the doctor, and you're the nurse, and what I do decides what you will do. I'm all right now. I, I just need to get some rest. They left to be carrion. Many a livid one, many a sallow skin left for the white tailed eagle to tear it. And left for the horny nipped raven to rend it. And gave to the garbaging war hope to gorge it. And that gray beast, the wolf of the weald. Some night soon. The doctor's going to help you, Judge Cameron. Gibberish. The doctor will help you. Masters has nothing to give me. I ain't talking about Deanie. I doubt that you know what it is you are talking about. I wish you would go. Stevens knows Miss Charlotte. And Miss Charlotte knows Dr. Stevens. That's right. He's going to help her, too. He don't want to hear just now. Denny wants her, though. Denny told me. Of course, Master doesn't want Beale to leave, you idiot. Sometimes, Dr. Stevens tells me about Miss Charlotte. Yeah. Dr. Stevens will always be in the present. Wish we could all think of him that way. Judge. Judge, your floor is dirty. Now, it's your responsibility to keep your room clean. I want you to take care of it now. You had a real baby once, didn't you, honey? This is my baby. Geez, I feel sorry for you. You really think that's a real baby? Baby? Yeah. Now get off, you moron! Allison?
My name is Oliver W. Cameron, adjudicator of the Court of Special Sessions. Please examine the evidence. Judge, can you be a man to me? My name is Oliver W. I'm asking you. My name Judge, is... please, love me. I need somebody to love me. But don't touch me. Alike. Danny, Jeffy, I love you. Have it! And you trying to be so high and mighty. Get out. I need you to help me about something else. I mean, I know, I know you can keep a secret. Judge, I got me a man. Yeah, I was with him yesterday, right here. Oh, he's sweet with, with beautiful limbs. I think maybe he's gone. I think maybe he's looking for me and he can't find me. He's the most beautiful man anywhere and he loves me. You always did have an eye for such things. Judge, he wants me. Please help me find him. Naturally, I must weigh this new evidence very carefully. Judge, please! <laughs> Let me see. Back off, they're on their way. Let me see. Move it. There's nothing there. You're crazy. Get out. Get out. refuse to adhere to my discipline. Haven't I told you what time the lights are to be out at night in every room? Yes, sir, you have. I take it then that you're contesting my discipline, is that it? Answer me. My authority here in the sanitarium is going to remain absolute, unchallenged, and totally unimpeachable. Do you understand?
Jane here is going to never be challenged again. Do you understand? My office, my profession, my charge, my liability, my suffering for your good. Never to tip the fine balance of all that ever again. Sam, what could be troubling you this early? A whole lot of things, Miss Charlotte. Oh, such as what? Dr. Stevens. He's worried about things. Oh, I see. He wanted me to talk to you. What have you got there? Where did you get this? Who gave you this, Sam? He said you'd know. You'd understand. He wants to help you, Miss Charlotte. <laughs> Who wants to help me? What are you talking about? The doctor. Oh, Dr. Stevens, I suppose. <sighs> well, thank you very much, Sam. But I think we should talk less foolishly about all this. I'm the only one who could tell you, Miss Charlotte. Dr. Stevens is going to help you, if you take the watch. day seems to take away all your troubles. <sighs> For a while, anyway. Do you have a family, Danny? I thought you mentioned your mother once. Where did you live when you were young? Miami Beach. Oh, yes. Your mother was in business, wasn't she? Yeah. Massage parlor. <laughs> I remember. <sighs> For you. <laughs> Thank you, Danny. I guess it's time we should go in. Sure.
watching. I'm sure you know. We can be sure there will be other times. Other times for other things. Unlike your friend Danny, I... I choose only perfect moments. Perfect moments to work out perfect destinies for so many lives. Sure, they're missing. Very sure. They were taken from a new container. Oh, this is really quite serious. Have you checked all the rooms? Oh, just about, except for Danny's and Jennifer's. But you have checked uh, Cameron's and Jaffe's room. Oh, I checked those first. Well, I'll have to go over all this personally. Thank you.
Wake up, Bobby. Mm -hmm. Doug, what? Wake up. Doug, you have an ax. That's right, I do. And I'm gonna use it on you. <laughs> unless you stop making me wear masks all the time. The world needs to see my face. My beautiful face. <laughs> and also, I want you to start thanking me at the end of every show. <laughs> okay, okay, I, I think we can work that out. Do you, do you wanna throw it a commercial? Don't mind if I do. Thanks for watching B-Movie Mayhem. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Hold on, let me do that one more time real quick. Oh. I understand. I know it's not your typical resume. Okay, well. But candidate. But I've been working double shifts just to pay for books. I've been raising my two little brothers. I'm determined, driven, motivated. Isn't that what you're looking for? Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent at gradsoflife.org. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy, kids, work. Show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man, women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60, two over 50, one over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. A lot of drug abuse messages are full of statistics. How many people die? How many lives are ruined? How much drug use is costing the economy? But this message isn't about numbers. It's about crack. And the message is simple. Crack can kill you. I won't bore you with the statistics, except to say that it's not worth becoming one for a 10-minute high. Okay, everything has calmed down now. I gave Doug a popsicle, and he agreed to continue to appear in masks. I still don't know how he got that ax. It had blood on it. Whew. Anyways, it's time for us to find out why we can't look in the basement as we barrel towards the blood-soaked finale of Don't Look in the Basement.
can't find her. I can't find her anywhere. I gotta find her. Well, what is it? What do you want with her? I gotta show her. Down where I got the popsicle. What is it? What's down there? Come on. Come on, I'll show you. Sam, I don't have time to play right now. I'm busy.
set out. So. I think you better go to your room. I'll, I'll get you something to help you sleep. No. I'm not going anywhere. You're not going to touch me. We know all about that sleep. Your little doctor bit's over. Yeah, that's right. I told Miss Beale. She knows. What does she know? Does she know how I worked? How I trained? To be the best? And I could have been. Except for one insignificant lie. My mistake. I could have saved thousands. And I will. I'll help everyone. I'll help you, Allison. Hold out your arm. And you told me she was a patient, too. Give me your arm. Don't you touch me with that. No! You shouldn't have done that. I... I can't sleep now. I, I have to take care of my patients. Operator! Why don't you work? Wedding night.
anybody in this room? all over for you. Here. What is it, Sam? Dr. Stevens said you should read it. What? Take it, Miss Charlotte. She's sick. I, I've got to help her. I've got to find her. It's too late. The trial has been held. The verdict is guilty. Who are you to make a decision? I'm in charge. I'm the doctor here. The court has made a decision. You are no longer in charge. I am in charge. I am in charge! I allowed you privileges and liberties. Even after what you did to Dr. Stevens, I let you keep your little toy. You wouldn't take that away. I'll take it away. I'll take it away. I'll lock you in your room. Where is she? My name is Oliver W. Cameron. Where is she? Where is she? Salt. My name?
see us. A saint. Cures the incurable. Supreme authority! <laughs> Only faithful live here. Only you honors me. Is she bad? She's sick. She's ill. Take her upstairs. Dr. Stevens.
much everyone in the home hacked to pieces. It's time for the Bobby score. We have one star for Sam's popsicle habit, one star for a toy boat murder weapon, and one star for Dr. Steven surviving an ax wound in a dank and dirty basement for several days. That's a total of three stars. Cousin Bobby says that he's glad the US has more lax censorship laws than England. As usual, we close today with this metal moment. Okay, so the Misfits are technically a punk band, but I know many a metalhead that considers them their favorite punk band. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about their guitarist, Doyle Wolfgang von Frankenstein, and his connection to this very movie. Doyle was supposed to play a killer named The Duke, in a remake of the film. Titled Death Ward 13, the film was to be about a group of nurses who look after some patients in the closing days of a mental health facility and realize they are trapped. This would have been Doyle's first movie role, but unfortunately the film never came together. Just gonna have to listen to his killer guitar riffs. That's all we have for tonight. I hope you all enjoyed tonight's Descent into Madness. Remember to email me at CousinBobby216 at gmail.com and to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. A big thanks to my production partner, Pat Longbreak, as well as the rest of the crew here at TV20. Thanks also go to our graphic designer, Jeff Agneberg. Good night, Cleveland, and sweet dreams. You said you would thank me, Bobby! Oh, I'm sorry, Doug! Thank you!